Hey guys, got the old Tektronix out here, TDS 210. I was wondering the other day, it's a bit old, you know, I wonder how much the screen has dimmed over the, you know, the years of, of use. It's got the, uh, the old style cold cathode fluorescent, no LED technology inside this thing. Um, and I thought, you know, they, they do get dim with age, most lighting technology does. And um, being an older unit, there's going to be a bit of a, bit of a dimming going on. So I thought, hey, why not get some new CCFL tubes, cold cathode fluorescent tubes, put a new one in there and see what the, what the difference is, see if it makes it nice and bright again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to measure how bright this screen is with the uh, original cold cathode fluorescent. I'll show you guys how to replace it and um, we'll measure the new value, see if it's come any brighter. Uh, this is got this tutorial will be pretty much ballpark the same for any LCD that needs a new cold cathode fluorescent. So, not just specific to this this particular model. Um, it'll be you know pretty much the same technology, the same basic layout of you know, for laptop screens and TVs and that. If you want to replace the uh, the tube, it'd be a, a longer tube or a shorter tube or maybe one on each side, one on one side. Different layouts, but the basic idea will be the same. So, first of all. I'll use my uh, i1 Display Pro here, pull it up to the computer and uh, do a measurement on how bright this screen is, and then we can use that as a baseline to see what difference a new tube makes. All right, let's head over to the computer and see what numbers we get. All right, so I've got my uh, calibrator here. We'll sit that in the middle of the screen. Once this has been on for a little while, just to let that cathode fluorescent fully warm up and brighten up. And um, I'll turn off the lights so that we don't get any interference from you know the the background lighting causing a bad reading. So let's set that, and um, let's see what it says on the on the computer. Okay, you can see here I've got this set up. I'm using Display Cal at the moment. Uh, it's just a freeware piece of software that you know, a bit more feature than the uh, standard one that comes with the i1 display calibrator. But you can see the what we're getting here, the, uh, the results. So we've got a reasonably good um, white output. Uh, a couple of numbers there, but it's uh, about 4,500 Kelvin. But the this is the one we're interested in, the brightness. At the moment we're about 46 to 48 candelas per square meter. That's the number we want to see rise. We want more there because that means a brighter display. So let's go and uh, open this thing up and see how e easy it is to replace that tube. All right, so first step is to get into our device. In this case, we're going to take off our top handle. And then we've got two torque screws. Once we got those out, we're also going to take out the uh, power switch. Don't want to break that off. And then it kind of unclips from the bottom as you take it apart. It can be a little bit of a fiddle. Just like that. So this is what we're interested in. Now, we've got to take the screen out, which involves taking this panel off, because this piece here comes away from here. So, we're going to take all of our knobs out, and we want to unplug our screen cable. because we're going to have to take our screen out. Here. Yeah. There's two little tabs here and here. Don't forget to unplug your uh, inverter cable, the uh, 
CCFL cable there. Um, don't want to rip that either. And now we can carefully remove our screen. Now, our CCFL is under here. Be careful you don't break the tabs off if you're doing it with one of these. These will become brittle. I've already broken one off when I was uh, sizing up the, the, the CCFL I had to uh, purchase. But that will come out. Really careful with those, with those tabs. You can see I broke one off. Not a big deal. I'll put some electric tape on there. And you can see there, if I bring that up close, that bit that I'm moving, that's a cathode, the cold cathode fluorescent through there. I'm not going to unpeel this tape because I don't want to end up with it not sticking back down. So what I'm going to do, these silicon bumpers on the end, I'll just pull one of those back. They'll give me access to the uh, solder join. I can clip that cable or desolder it just in there. And I can pull that all the way out and I can slide the new one in afterwards. Okay, so I'll just pull this little silicon boot back and I'll just snip that there. Okay, that'll let us withdraw our, our tube. So there's a new one compared to the old one. I don't know if you can see, but this old one is a little bit greyer, especially at the ends. So um, I Luckily got the right size. Um, they do have different sizes. You can get like a 2.6 and a 2 point something or maybe 3 millimetres. So just double check your measurements. Measure the thickness of the tube and the length. And that way you'll get exactly the right size. So I'm going to do the same on this end. Get rid of that out the way. Give that a little snip. And get rid of our old tube. Now we have to do is uh, solder these bits onto the ends of here and then put it back together. Of course we can only do one side once we've already put it back in to our LCD screen here. And let's solder these together. Right. There we go. Make sure that gets on there nicely. Okay, put our cover back on. And there we go, we just replaced the CCFL. All right, let's put it back together and see if it works. Moment of truth coming up. All right, so I've got that all back together. Looking pretty good. So let's put it back into the machine. 
and get this thing working. See if it's going to fire up okay. These are flat flex cables. You want to be careful with those because they can be rather delicate. Same with anything in these sort of things actually. I mean the uh, the silicon wires are a bit soft so you've got to be careful you don't nick the uh, insulation because that can kind of ruin your day a little bit as well. Just plug that one in there. And then plug this one down in here. Okay, we're done. Let's plug this in, see what we get. It's working so far. We're getting a display. So I'm gonna leave this on for a little bit um, because the, it's a brand new tube. It's gonna take a little while for it to, to fully brighten up. Most fluorescent tubes do that. The phosphors, when they're brand new, they've got to burn in or do whatever. So you get a little bit of flicker, a little bit of, like it'll be a little bit dim to start with, but after like a few hours, it'll fully brighten up. Then we'll, um, we'll do the test and see if we've got a brightest display. So I'll be back in a sec and we'll try it out. All right, so I've had it sitting here for a while, burning in that uh, the CCFL tube and um, we're ready to test. So. Just by my eye, it is looking a bit nicer, a bit whiter, a bit brighter. Maybe it's a placebo effect, but it does look a bit nicer. So let's see what it says on the, uh, the computer. So you can see there we're at uh, 65 candelas per square meter. So we've increased by quite a bit. That's about 35% up on the, uh, the previous reading. So I'm going to say that's a success. So there we go. We've got a successful repair. Um, we've got a brighter screen, measurable difference, and it looks a bit nicer too, just to my eye. It looks a bit whiter, it definitely looks a bit brighter. So, definitely a good upgrade to do if you've got an old screen. Any LC screen with a, a CCFL, this one was up here, sometimes they're any, could be any side, could be double. But if you've got an old screen that's looking a bit dim, you can see how easy it is to bring it back to life. Alright guys, we'll see you next time.